عليك عليك لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود and you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Hello everybody, welcome to my live broadcast. Hope everybody is doing okay. Welcome, God bless you. Please subscribe, smash that like button, destroy it like it's demon possessed and click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload new videos. Welcome everybody. Let me say hi to Hafsa for Christ. Welcome. Uh, Vili, Jason Palmer, Frauch, TM Crosspulse, Redmouth, All the Banker, Phil Herrera, our beloved admin, Princess Rainbow, Painos Filippo, Max, Copper, Peter the Wall, Love to Love, Malaysian Prophet, RK, John Viken, Saint Eleora. Welcome everybody. If I didn't mention your name, please forgive me. There are many of you. God bless you. God bless your families. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for watching today's live show. Guys, we are live on air. Hopefully today we'll have some Muslims who uh, dare to call us. Maybe there are Muslims who might think they have the courage and the knowledge to call us. I see there are six dislikes. That means we have at least six Muslims watching. We have at least six Muslims watching. Today's topic, guys, <clears throat> today's topic is who's actually talking in the Quran? On this live broadcast, guys, we will have the opportunity today to investigate who, who's, who are the ones actually talking in the Quran. Who are the ones actually talking in the Quran? Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we'll have, as always, a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. If there are Muslims, my Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Hopefully, you can call me live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. Before we start, guys, I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please, please, please bless us, our beloved audience, please. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for my lovely audience and subscribers who kept supporting me day in and day out for the last year. Please bless them and their families and keep all of us healthy and safe. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts and actions. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, mekr, taqiyya, deception, lies or any doubt, Lord. Please honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your light, your holy light on the Muslims who are truly in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved as we are saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without error or any shame. Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. As we mentioned earlier, guys, on this live broadcast, we will have the opportunity today to investigate who are actually the ones talking in the Quran. Hopefully, there are Muslims today who might learn a thing or two. How many Muslims do we have, guys, today? 
Do we have uh, Muslims? Well, guys, before we start, let me say the following. We are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready? Wrestling fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Are you ready? I hope you are ready, guys, because I am ready. And if I have having a good day, you must have a good day. I really am happy to be live with you guys. Oh, I think we are already having a call. I didn't even start yet, Muslims. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Let me call this guy. Adamu Bakari. That's the guy who always steals, steals the wife of his neighbors. This Nigerian Muslim. Pick up the phone, man. Just a second, guys. Okay, I'm back, guys. Sorry for that. Let me call this guy back again. <clears throat> Pick up, Abdul. Pick up. Hello? Hello, Rob. How are you doing? I'm good, Adam Bakari. How are you? How about it's you? Fine. I'm, I'm doing fine. You're, you're fine. Okay, good, good, good. Go yes. ahead, my friend. You're live on air. People can hear you. Okay, okay. So, I want to know whether you know Christian Christianity uh, better than and i lost you my friend how many times do you call us and you use the wi-fi of your neighbors why are you stealing the wi-fi of your neighbors man what has my christianity to do with my today's topic by the way stop stealing the wi-fi of your neighbors or maybe move out of the place that you are in get a good connection then call me because your connection is always bad you're a waste of time abdul Dive internet, yeah, dive internet, brother. It is what it is, guys. And this guy keeps calling me uh, a coward on Facebook and whatnot. I, I, we didn't even start yet and you're already calling. You have no idea what the topic is. And you want to call me? <laughs> yeah, we have uh, eight dislikes, by the way. Eight dislikes, so that means there are at least eight Muslims watching. How can you give someone a dislike without even knowing what we are going to talk about today? Anyway, it is what it is, guys. Muslims do really, that's proof that Muslims really don't care about the truth. They only give dislikes because you're a Christian apologist, doing live shows, doing videos. Now, the to topic of today, guys, again, for the people who joined, the topic of today is who is actually talking in the Quran? Who is actually talking in the Quran? Before we go there, guys, let me give you a small introduction. There are actually differences in divine revelation between the Bible and the Quran. Right, guys? Uh, if there's a Muslim who has a question, you can call me live, okay? We don't fear to talk about Christianity. We are already doing that. You see the Bible? Do you see the word Bible? Mr. May Chudi, we don't fear anyone, man. You're an Islamophobe, Rob Christian. Someone called me an Islamophobe yesterday when I posted uh, that 
community message, guys, about John 17:3. Remember? You're a coward. You are an Islamophobe. Brother, do you know the definition of phobia? No one is scared of Islam, man. No one is scared of you. We are doing live shows. We are allowing you to call us live on air. Do you see Mimi, Fifi, or Lily allowing anybody to call on their live shows? Do you see any scholar or imam or ustaz allowing anybody to call them live for a debate? No way. Because they know what will happen, right? How many live shows are there like our live shows? Maybe Christian Prince? Only two. Give me, give me a live show that is allowing you to call live. They allow to debate face to face unlike you. Rob, you're finished. Brother, you want to debate me or date me? Why do you want to see my face? I'm not into men, my friend. Come on, man. You know, if you want to see someone's face, Go to a bar, go to, you know, there's something wrong with you Muslims. So guys, there are differences in divine revelation between the Holy Bible and the Quran. And this is why Muslims are actually confused. They are confused about the Bible because they actually think that the Bible is inspired the same way the Quran is inspired, which is a false thinking by Muslims. Muslims actually have no idea how the Bible works, let alone they have any clue how the Quran works. So the Bible, guys, the Bible is inspired this way. People of God, let's say prophets, spoke as they were moved or inspired by the Holy Spirit. But the Quran supposedly, so-called divine revelation from Allah, through Jibril with Morse code, peep, 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 to Muhammad, right? Right? When uh, Jibril uh, went into that cave where Muhammad was staying and he started to squeeze him, Iqra, Iqra. Ma ana bi qari, qari. Right? It's, it's a cave, right, guys? Don't blame me. It's a cave. So you hear the echo. Iqra, Iqra. Ma ana bi qari. I cannot read, read. Why? Why? Can't you read? read? Yeah, because there's nothing to read from, brother. Don't use excuses if you dare come to the lion's territory. Brother, we have seen your uh, lion's territory in Speaker's Corner. We have seen that. Do you think they answer any question there? I've seen many videos of Speaker's Corner and whatnot. The Muslims there don't dare to answer the questions of our dear sister Hatun Tash or Bob the Builder or uh, Daniel. I don't know all the names, guys. Uh, I think there's a brother Kane who is also doing an amazing job lately. Guys, keep our warriors in your prayers. Keep our admins, our fellow warriors in Christ in your prayers. Pray for us, guys. So we can keep doing what we do to expose this man-made sex cult, this hate, death, mongering cult. Yeah. So keep us all in your prayers, guide. We need your prayers. So Muslims are actually, as we said, Muslims are confused how the Bible works. They have no idea how the Bible has been inspired. So as you see, there's a huge, huge difference between the way the Bible has been inspired and the way the Quran has been inspired. This actually proves, guys, pay attention, take notes. This actually also proves that Islam is not an Abrahamic religion, as the Muslims claim, because if Islam was an Abrahamic religion, Jibreel would have not been in between, right? Right? So there's a huge difference between the Holy Bible and the Quran. Muslims are actually very, very confused. They have no idea. Right? They have no idea. They have no clue when they say the Bible of Allah is corrupted. The Bible of Allah is lost. Brother, we don't believe in Allah. And the way 
the so-called divine revelation of the Quran has been sent down is a different way. So this proves that Islam has nothing to do with Abraham, Isaac or Jacob. It's not an Abrahamic religion. It's a man-made cult created by one man, Muhammad, for his own sexual desires. As Aisha said, مَا أَرَى رَبُّكَ إِلَّا يُسَارَ فِي هَوَاكَ يَا مُحَمَّدِ Aisha said, and I quote, I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your sexual desire. I mean your desires, right? Muhammad. Uh -huh, Aisha said. She knew. Aisha knew her husband is a scam. Every time Muhammad get busted, every time Muhammad gets spanked, Allah comes, his slave, I mean Allah the slave comes to his master Muhammad to help him out, right? God of the Holy Bible actually punished people like King David who committed horrendous crimes and his son Solomon. They repented and God forgave them. But Allah sounds like a, a big pimp for Muhammad's penis, right Muslims? Every time Muhammad wants women, sex slaves, Allah said, Go ahead, brother, don't worry, I'm not going to punish you. Go ahead, I will allow you. You want more than four wives? Take, go ahead, take, your, to, take as many wives as you want, man. No problem. So Aisha, guys, when she said, I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your desires, she knew her husband, Muhammad, is a scam. He's a fake prophet, man. He's inventing Quran ayahs for his own desires. Let us go back to the topic, guys. <clears throat> Who's actually talking in the Quran? Let us start. Let us start. If we go to chapter 1, if we go to chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha, we can read the following. Let us start reading from, let's say, Ayah 2. Muslims will say, the Quran is the speech of Allah, right? The Quran is the speech of Allah. Let us put that to the test. This is the first chapter, right? Are you saying that the Quran of this is the speech of Allah, Muslims? Muslims will say, yes. Okay. Are you, let us read the, the, the first chapter, ayah 2. Allah is saying, all praise be to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. Allah is saying, you alone, Allah is the one talking. You alone we worship, and to you alone turn for help. Allah is asking for guidance. Allah is saying, guide us Allah to the path that is straight. Is that what you're trying to say? That doesn't make sense, Muslims. Who is talking here? Allah, brother. But Allah is asking to be guided. Allah is saying, you alone we worship. Who is Allah worshipping, man? Allah needs guidance, Muslims. I mean, you always claim that the Quran is the speech of Allah, right? The eternal, uncreated speech of Allah. Well, as you see, this doesn't already make sense. The first chapter already doesn't make sense. Who is Allah worshipping? Who is Allah asking for guidance? Allah is asking another Allah or Jibreel or Muhammad to guide him? Brother, brother, brother. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who can answer this disaster? Islam is peace. Please change your name because Islam does not mean peace. Islam means surrender to the will of Allah and his prophet. So change your name. Your name is Taqiyah, brother. Islam is peace. Your name is Taqiyah, brother. Uh, who, is, who is spanking who? Who is spanking who? Yeah, Islam is peace. Your name is Taqiyah. Your name is deception. Who is spanking who? <laughs> People are laughing, man. People are laughing at you. Brother, I only debate in chat, brother. Yeah, right. You coward. You coward. Yeah, Jaban, Ibn Jaban. If we go to chapter 6, guys. Surah Al-An'am. Chapter 6, Surah Al-An'am. We can read the following. We can read the following. It says here, say... God, who is witness between you and me, 
that his this Quran has been revealed to me. Who is the one talking here, Muslims? Who is the one talking here? Guys, I went to uh, the Islamic Encyclopedia. I went to the Islamic Encyclopedia that has been created by Al Azhar. Right? This is a huge encyclopedia, like, like Wikipedia, let's say, guys. The Islamic Encyclopedia, like Wikipedia, that is written by the Al Azhar in Cairo, Egypt. Guys, pay attention. This is very important, okay? Pay attention. So, the Al Azhar University, the number one Imams in the Islamic world, i.e., Da'irat al Ma'arif, right? In their book, in, in their book, Da'irat al Ma'arif, volume 26, page 8166. Uh, love to love, thank you for your donation. God bless you. Uh, love to love says, Muslims call in debate or run away from your books shown on screen. Are you afraid of references? Respect your books. Yes. If there is a Muslim, I mean, you should not be afraid to call us. Right? So guys, the Islamic Encyclopedia by Al-Azhar, right? It is called in Arabic, Da'irat Al-Ma'arif, volume 26, page 8166. Now, guys, pay attention what it says. Under the column, right? Under the address on this page called Muhammad and the Quran, they say the following, guys. Watch what they are saying. Red Mouth, thank you for your donation. Let me read what you just said. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for me. Amen to that, my friend. Amen. Jesus is Lord. He came to serve so we can be saved. Amen to that. Glory to his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May Jesus bless everybody. And may his truth, Al-Haq, he claimed to be Al-Haq, he claimed to be the truth. May his truth shine down upon everybody, including the Christians and the Muslims. Now let's see what page 8166 says. The Islamic Sunni view, pay attention guys, they say, the Islamic Sunni view consists of belief that Allah, Most High, is the speaker in the Quran. Guys, that's what the, uh, the Islamic Encyclopedia by Al-Azhar is saying on this page. So Allah is the speaker and Muhammad is the recipient. So Allah sends his Quran and Muhammad is the one who is receiving Quran, right guys? Yet, now pay attention to the following claim by Al-Azhar. Thank you, God bless you to uh, a simple period. God bless you, Rob. Thank you, thank you for your donation. I appreciate it. God bless you and your families. They continue saying, yet there are other ayahs. Guys, pay attention what, they are, what the Al-Azhar University is saying in their book. Yet there are other ayahs in the Quran which have other indications. Ah, other indications about this topic? So it seems they are trying to say that there are other indications that the one Allah is the speaker and Muhammad is the recipient, right? Other indications, that's what they have said in their book. And if we continue in the same book, right? The Erit al Ma'arif, page 8167, it says, and in some other ayahs, that's what they said, Al-Azhar, right? Not me, this is not me talking. And in some other ayahs of the Quran, it seems, what does it seem? As if Muhammad is the speaker. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. They are confirming that Al Azhar is confirming that the one sometimes is speaking in different ayahs is not Allah, 
It's Muhammad. This is not me, guys. This is the Al Azhar. Sunni, Sunni, Al Azhar number one uh, uh, scholars, guys, in Islam. These are the PhD Sunni Muslim scholars who are saying that in their books. This is in Da'irat al Ma'arif, volume 26, page 8167, by Al Azhar, the is Islamic Encyclopedia. That's what it's called. Who is the one? Muhammad is the speaker in the Quran. Uh -huh. Around Christian, it's your own story. No, brother, go check for yourself. I challenge you to check out that book. It's in Arabic. Go check out. I even gave you the page. And I challenge you to refute me. You are clearly uh, an ignorant. You are ignorant. You never read this book. We did, right? Go check it out yourself, right? And by the way, your name is really weak. Your name is Da'if, brother, because Islam does not mean peace. Islam means surrender to the will of Allah and His Prophet. So that's what Da'irat al-Ma'arif, the number one Islamic Encyclopedia by Al-Azhar, University of Cairo, Egypt. That's what they say. The Quran contains the word of Muhammad. He is the speaker. Aha! Uh -huh. Let me prove it to you guys. Let me prove it to you. If we go to chapter 81, at Taqweer, Ayah 19, look what it says. Look what Ayah 19 is saying on the screen, guys. This is the Quran. This is QuranWow.com. This is not my website. This is your Islamic website. This is your Quran. You can open up the Quran and see for yourself. Ayah 19, chapter 81, Ayah 19 says, and I quote, that this is indeed the word of an honored messenger. Uh -huh. The word of Muhammad? The Quran is the word of Muhammad, brother? Yes, brother Rob. Yes, brother. That's not what it says, Rob. <laughs> Rob, it's not what it's saying, Rob. It doesn't say that, Rob. Brother, the Quran is the word of the honored messenger. <laughs> If we continue, guys, we go to chapter Al-An'am, chapter Al-An'am, chapter 6, ayah 104. We can read the following. Muhammad again is the one talking. Do you see it? I, Muhammad, is the one talking. Anna, right? I, I am not a watcher over you. Again, Muhammad is the one speaking. Right? This is not Allah talking. This is Muhammad. What did the Islamic Encyclopedia, the Ayrat al Ma'arif, said? The Al Azhar, what did they say in their book? It seems as if Muhammad is the speaker. At least these people are honest, man. They are honest. They are honest. You Muslims are liars. You have been fooled. At least the scholars, should we listen to Muslims like you who are, who are nobody? So should we get the confirmation from the number one university, Islamic university in the Muslim world? It seems as if Muhammad is the speaker in the Quran. Take notes, guys. At least the scholars are honest in their book, in the Islamic Encyclopedia. The Irat al Ma'arif, volume 26, page 8167. This is Al Azhar. This is the Al Azhar, guys. These are not nobodies. These are the most respected scholars in Islam, right? The most respected scholars in Islam say 
and in some other ayahs of the Quran, it seems as if Muhammad is the speaker. Let us continue. Chapter 6, Surah Al-An'am again, ayah 114. Shall I seek other than Allah for judge? Who is the one talking? Allah is the one talking. Clearly not. If you're saying this is Allah, then it means Allah is saying, Shall I seek other than Allah for judge? That cannot be uh, accepted by anyone. Is Allah in need of another Allah who is going to be the judge? Or is Muhammad the one talking? Clearly Muhammad is doing poo poo here. Right? Muhammad did a huge damage here in this ayah. And he forgot that he should have fabricated this ayah as if Allah is the one speaking, not himself. So Muhammad, when he fabricated this ayah, he forgot that he's the one talking here. Muhammad is the one talking here. Shall I seek other than Allah for judge? <laughs> Surah Al-Hud, chapter 11. That you may worship none but Allah. Verily, Muhammad is saying, Verily, I have come to you as a warner. Uh oh. Again, Muhammad is talking. Who is the one talking here? Muhammad. Guys, take notes. And Muhammad knows best. Right, Muslims? Are you saying this is Allah talking? Allah is the one who is warning, doing the warning, or is it Muhammad? Huh? We know that it's Muhammad. Right? Look this what this Islam is peace saying. At Rob Christian, dude, you are creating a bad situation for Christians that live in the Muslim countries. Why? Are you saying they are in danger because of you Muslims? That proves your name, right? Islam is peace, brother. Islam is peace. What is this bad situation for the Christians in the Middle East? Or let's say Indonesia. You're going to kill them? You said, you say your name is Islam is peace. Brother, look how scared the Christians are in 2020. Look how scared these Islamophobic Christians are. Look how scared I am, man. I'm so scared. Ooh, I don't know what to do with myself. Islam is peace, you are, you are truly the smartest Muslim that I've seen in a long time. <clears throat> so who is the one talking here? Again, Muhammad. What did the Islamic Encyclopedia said by Al-Azhar? Al-Azhar in their Da'irat al-Ma'arif, volume 26, page 8167. And in some other ayahs of the Quran, it seems as if Muhammad is the speaker. Uh -huh. You see? Other ayah, chapter 27, Surat An-Naml. Surat An-Naml. The ants, right? An-Naml, the ants. Ayah 91. Look what Muhammad is saying in the Quran. I am commanded only to worship the Lord of this city. Who is the one talking here? Allah? Allah is saying I am commanded only to worship the Lord? Is this, is Allah? Allah, is that you? Allah, is that you speaking? Or is this someone else? Who is the one talking? Ya donkey. Yahmar, Yahmar, Islam is peace, Yahmar, Yahmar ibn Yahmar, answer the question. Who is the one saying, I am commanded only to worship the Lord of this city? Who is that? Who is the one talking, man? Guys, take notes. Chapter 27, ayah 91, write it down. Guys, Christians, please don't be lazy, all right? I think 
a lot of Christians have not, not been noticing that YouTube is actually attacking me. YouTube actually shadow banned my view account, uh, accounts, right? For some reason, I'm not sure if that's actually so. I think this is nothing but a shadow ban by YouTube. Our view counts have been cut in half, to be honest with you. My last video, for some reason, had only 900 views. 900 views, I used to receive 900 views, like, let's say, 11 months ago. So guys, if you want to be Christians, you really want to call yourself a Christian, you need to share our videos on social media, share it with Muslims that you know. Don't be lazy, Christians. Support our warriors, all right? Support our warriors, invite people to our live shows, to our videos. You know, I've received many um, requests from Christians and they've been asking us, Rob Christian, we are really busy. We have a busy life, we have children, we have busy jobs. We cannot watch live shows to learn about Islam. Please create short and detailed videos too besides your live shows. Well, I can do that, but if I'm not going to get enough views and you Christians are not sharing our videos, then what's the point? Because the only way to spread the truth, expose this cult, is by you guys. I cannot do this alone. You have to spread our videos. You have to share our videos on social media. And you know what kind of weapon social media and internet are against this man-made cult. So guys, if you call yourself a Christian, you want to preach the truth, help me to help you. Don't be lazy, Christians. Most Christians, unfortunately, unfortunately, they rather watch TV. They rather watch uh, cooking videos, maybe Netflix. Yeah. Instead of doing the job that Jesus himself commanded you to do. If one soul, if one Muslim soul can be saved today, there is going to be a huge celebration in heaven, according to the Bible. So help me to help you. If you can just save one soul, guys, by... I'm not, I'm not asking you, Christians, to do live shows or create videos like we do. I'm not asking you to do that. But at least, at least spread them. We cannot do this alone, guys. Right? So please, Christians, don't be lazy. Do what you gotta do. Let me go back to my topic of today. So who is the one talking in chapter 27? I am 91 saying, I am commanded only to worship the Lord of the city. Who is the one talking here? This must be Muhammad again, right Muslims? What did Da'irat al-Ma'arif say? It seems as if Muhammad is the speaker. Aha! Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. If we go to chapter 2791, we continue reading. It says, and I am commanded to be of the Muslims. Who is the one talking? Who is the one saying, and I am commanded to be one of the Muslims? Again, Muhammad is speaking. How dare you Muslims to say the Quran is only the speech of Allah? How dare you? Clearly, again, Muhammad forgot to speak as Allah. Here, again, Muhammad is doing huge damage. Right? Here, again, Muhammad is doing huge damage. And if we continue to Surah Ashura, chapter 42, ayah 10, it says, that then is God, my Lord, in him I have put my trust and to him I turn. Wow! Again, it seems that Muhammad is the one talking. Now guys, guys, since we can conclude and have to agree with the Eret al-Ma'arif by Al-Azhar University, right? By the scholars in Cairo, Egypt, right? The PhD scholars who wrote the Eret al-Ma'arif, the Islamic Encyclopedia, right? And Muslims, 
love to tell you Quran is the speech of Allah, but actually the scholars do not agree with that and see and agree that Muhammad is a speaker in the Quran also. So some people, guys, some people might say the following, okay? Pay attention to what their answer is. Some Muslims will say, hey, Rob Christian, listen, Rob Christian, Al-Mufassirun or the commentators of the Quran, like Al-Tabari, like Ibn Kathir and others, they are saying, you have always to think and interpret this as say, right? Say I am commanded. Say I am commanded to be of the Muslims, right? Say I am commanded only to worship the Lord. This is why in many eyes you see here between brackets as the first word, say, قُلْ, right? Guys, are you paying attention? Do you understand what I'm saying here? So you have to always think in your mind that this is saying, قُلْ, say, right? Say, I am commanded only to worship the Lord. So say that. Say Muhammad, right? Ya Muhammad, qul, qul, right? But wait. If you're going to go by that interpretation and you're asking for my opinion about this, Rob Christian, what is your opinion, man, about this problem? Well, I understand that you're trying to interpret it at that way. But, 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 Muslims, Muslims, if Al-Tabari or others, pay attention guys, if Al-Tabari or Ibn Kathir or Al-Qurtubi or others interpret this as say or Qul, Qul in Arabic means say, then that means Al-Tabari, guys, that means Al-Tabari or others are adding their own words to the Quran and that is Tahrif, that is corruption of the text in the Quran. That is the corruption of the Quran by the hands of scholars and Mufassirun, right? You are adding your own words to the Quran of Allah. That's tahrif, that is corrupting the Quran ayahs, the Quran itself. Are you allowed as a Muslim, are you allowed as a Muslim to play with the Quran of Allah and call yourself a Muslim? Clearly not. No way. In no way, shape or form are you allowed to add words to the Quran, right? Especially to the Arabic Quran. Qul, say. But can you find verses that mention the word qul or say? The answer is no. You can't see it. Do you see say? No. You don't see it in the Quran in the Arabic. It doesn't say qul. I am commanded. It doesn't say that, right? So these Mufassirun, these commentators, these interpreters of the Quran, like Al-Tabari, like Ibn Kathir, like Al-Qurtubi, are adding their own words, are actually corrupting the uncorrupted Quran of Allah. That's what they are doing when they are trying to tell you. This, this, this says, say, قُلْ I am commanded. You are corrupting the uncorrupted Quran of Allah when you do that. Do you, Muslims, do you want to have a cake and eat it too? Are you allowed to play with the Quran of Allah and still call yourself a Muslim? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. That's a no-no, right, Muslims? So the verses or ayahs, as we read them, ferbatim, right? Ferbatim, as they are, as it says, do not have qul. You see, I mean, the proof is in front of you. You don't see, it doesn't say qul. Where is the qul? There is no qul. There is nothing said saying, say I'm commanded, right? So they are actually adding their own words to the Quran when they do that. So are you saying Muslims that your Mufassirun, your Tafsir daddies, they are adding something extra, an extra flavor, their extra personal flavor to the Quran of Allah? This is a huge problem Muslims. And the word Qul or say when they add it in their Tafsir also, is the word qul or say also in the preserved tablet in Luh al-Mahfuz 
with Allah in Jannah? Does the Luh al Mahfuz contain the words say? You tell me. Is this not tampering or corrupting the Quran by your own hands, ya Mufassirun? Huh? So, as we mentioned earlier, by the testimony, right, by the testimony of the Islamic Encyclopedia on page 8167, Da'irat al Ma'araf al Islamiya by Al Azhar University, they are actually being very honest here. They are actually honest when they say Muhammad is the speaker in the Quran, as we proved it to you. Right? My then then is God my Lord in him I have in him I have put my trust and to him I turn as you see they are actually not denying the fact that Muhammad is the one talking All right they are not denying that now guys <clears throat> Muslims still love to tell you that the Quran is the speech of Allah. How is the Quran the speech of Allah when you have Muhammad the one doing the talking? You tell me Muslims. Guys, before we continue and show you more examples, I want to share something else with you. I want to ask you to take a screenshot, a snapshot, because I'm going to explain the following thing. Take notes guys, if we go to sort of Sorry, if we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 3806, 3806, let me give you the link. Guys, copy and bookmark the link, save it, so you can benefit from it in your debates with Muslims. If we go to this Hadith, Hadith number 3806 of Sahih al-Bukhari, <coughs> my Throat is itching, guys. Let me drink something. <clears throat> <clears throat> Narrated Abdullah bin Amr. I heard the Prophet, so the one is talking, Muhammad, saying, Muhammad is saying, the Prophet of Islam saying, learn the recitation of the Quran from four persons. Who are those four persons? Ibn Mas'ud. Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hudayfa, Ubay ibn Kaab, and Mu'ad bin Jabbal. So according to Muhammad, if you want to learn the Quran, go to those four. And the number one guy is Ibn Mas'ud. The number one guy, guys, this is Ibn Mas'ud. Take notes. Ibn Mas'ud, he said in the following. The number one, Ibn Mas'ud, the number one appointed companion by the Prophet of Islam himself, who told his followers to go to regarding recitation of the Quran. So if you want to learn the Quran in Mecca, go to Ibn Mas'ud. But Ibn Mas'ud did not include in his personal Quran the following chapters. Chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha. Chapter 113, Surah Al-Falaq, Daybreak. And chapter 114, the last chapter, Surah Al-Nas, Mankind. Uh oh, uh oh, so Muslims, should you follow the number one guy or should we follow halves? You Muslims used today, the vast majority Muslims on this planet, they use the recitation. Muslims, let's say more than 90% use the recitation of halves. We know that Hafs Quran has 114 chapters, right? But the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud, the number one guy, right? He's the number one guy. He's Muhammad started with him. He didn't. And where, where's Hafs? Where's Hafs? Hafs came 200 years later. So if you want to learn about the Quran, go to the number one guy, Ibn Mas'ud. But Ibn Mas'ud, his Quran, Ibn Mas'ud's Quran had only 111 chapters. You know what he called the Uthmanic Quran, guys? A deceit. Ibn Mas'ud, 
called the copy of Uthman. You know, the story goes like this, guys. Uthman orders Zayd ibn Thabit to go and collect the Quran and rewrite it in the Qurayshi dialect. So, what does ibn, uh, Zayd ibn Thabit do? What, do? what did he do? He went to Hafsa, he took her Quran, and as if that Quran was not already perfect, he needs to make another perfect copy, rewrite the Quran in the Qurayshi dialect, and make nine copies. Nine copies were sent to, let's say, Damascus, Basra, uh, to many places, right? Where are those Qurans? Allahu Alam. We don't have them anymore. They are gone. There is nothing called the Uthmanic Quran. It's lost. Poof. It's gone. That so-called Quran had 114 chapters. But the number one guy, Ibn Mas'ud, his Quran had three chapters missing. Why? Why, guys? Here is why. According to Ibn Mas'ud, this is the same chapter, right, guys? According to Ibn Mas'ud al-Fatiha, this chapter is a prayer. According to Ibn Mas'ud, he said this is a prayer. We should not include a prayer to the Quran because you're going to make Allah looking like a fool. Because you're going to say, you want to have a cake and eat it too, Muslims. Basically what Ibn Mas'ud is saying. You are telling people that the Quran is the speech of Allah, yet the one who is talking here is not Allah. Right? Guide us to the straight path. It is you we worship. That doesn't make sense. So Ibn Mas'ud decided to not include Surah Al-Fatiha to his personal Mus'haf of the Quran. His own version of the Quran. And that also is for chapter 113. He removed also this one. He didn't include it. Right? Chapter the Daybreak, Al-Falaq. This one is also a prayer. And... The last chapter, 114, Surat An-Nas, Mankind, he also did not include this, uh, this entire chapter. So three chapters are not included in the Quranic Mus'haf of Ibn Mas'ud. Guys, do you understand what is happening? Give me one if you caught what I'm trying to tell you. Did you catch what I'm trying to tell you guys? Give me one if you understood that the number one guy that Muhammad told you to go to, right? He ordered the Muslims learn the recitation of the Quran from four persons. The number one guy, Ibn Mas'ud, he did not include three chapters in his Quranic Mus'haf. So three chapters, right? are missing. So Ibn Mas'ud had 111 chapters only, right? Uh oh, this is a huge problem. Muhammad didn't say go to Zayd ibn Thabit. Muhammad didn't say go to Uthman. No, he clearly said go to four. Do you see the name of Uthman here? Do you see the name of Zayd ibn Thabit here? No. And by the way, Zayd ibn Thabit, that actually wrote the Quran that Muslims claim that's the Quran of uh, Uthman, Zayd ibn Thabit was a young boy. He was simply too young to be included to the list of four. He was a young boy. Ibn Mas'ud called him a deceiver, guys. Ibn Mas'ud called Zayd ibn Thabit a deceiver when he included chapter 1, Chapter 114 and chapter 113. He called Ibn Mas'ud, actually the number one guy called Ibn Mas'ud, called Zayd ibn Thabit a deceiver when he added Al-Fatiha, chapter 113 and chapter 114 to the Quran. Uh -huh. So are you saying that Zayd ibn Thabit corrupted the Quran with his own hand? Yeah. Let me prove it to you even more. Guys, pay attention. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove to you that Surah Al-Fatiha was not part of the Quran in the first place. Watch. If we go to chapter 15, right? Chapter 15, 
I uh, let's see here. Read with me, guys. And we have certainly given you. There is nothing called O Muhammad in the Arabic text, so this is corruption in the translation. Seven of the often repeated verses. And what? The great Quran. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, pay attention. What are the seven often repeated verses? Anyone? Any idea, guys? Anyone has an idea what the seven often repeated verses are? Anyone? Maybe you paid attention the last time we mentioned this. Anyone, guys? Admins, if you know the answer, don't say it. <laughs> Admins, don't destroy the game. <laughs> Someone is saying, which chapter is that from the Quran? What is that? What is the seven often repeated verses? Andrew Martin. Bam! You got it, my friend. Chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha. Yeah, Phil, Phil Herrera, man, you spoiled it, man. Yeah, let me prove it, guys. If we go to a tafsir to, exp to see what it means, what the seven often repeated verses are, right? This is tafsir of Al Jalali. So you see it? Tafsir Al Jalali, chapter 15, ayah 87. Tafsir Al Jalali, tafsir, right? And verily, this is Tafsir Jalalain. And verily, we have given you seven of the often repeated verses. The Prophet said that this meant what did this mean? Surat Al Fatiha. Uh uh. So the seven often repeated verses are Surat Al Fatiha. What did the Quran say? And we have certainly given you which means O Muhammad, you is O Muhammad, seven of the often repeated verses and what? And, right? The great Quran. Ah, so are you saying originally, Rob Christian, wait, wait, Rob Christian, are you saying that originally chapter one of the Quran was not part of the Quran? Yes. So, Al-Fatiha, which is seven verses, right, was originally not part of the Quran. This is why Ibn Mas'ud, as we mentioned earlier, this is why Ibn Mas'ud Ibn Mas did not include Al-Fatiha. Ah, now the puzzle pieces are falling in the right places, Rob Christian. Now I understand what you're trying to say. Do you see how Zayd ibn Thabit corrupted the Quran of Muhammad? By adding Al-Fatiha to the Quran. Did you catch it? Take notes, take a screenshot. It says, Wa Al-Quran, right? Wa and the Quran. So Al Fatiha, which is seven ayahs, right? Seven ayahs. Look, one, two, this is Al Fatiha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ayahs only. So this is talking about Al Fatiha that was never part of the Quran, the original Quran in the first place. So the Quran of Muhammad is gone. It's poof. It's gone. Right? So Zayd ibn Thabit did huge corruption. And on top of that, the one who was in power, Uthman ibn Affan, he collected all the Qurans, all the manuscripts, and he set them on fire. That day, Uthman did a huge Quranic barbecue. Right? 
I hope they had some delicious lamb meat or maybe marshmallows, right? By Uthman. Yep. Why would you? Here's the question. Why would you burn or original Quranic manuscripts? Why would you do that? Because there were many variants. Many people started adding all kind of words to the Quran. Chapters that supposedly will not dare. Even the second, the third guy, guys. Even the third guy. This guy, Obey ibn Kab. Obey. His Quranic Mus'haf was 116 chapters. 116, two chapters more than the Quran of today. Yes. So is the Quran 111 chapters? Ibn Mas'ud, right? As we mentioned to you. Is the Quran 114 chapters? Zayd ibn Thabit. Or let's say the Uthmanic Quran. Right? Or 116 chapters. You tell me. Pick and choose, Muslims. What is the right Quran? 111 chapters of Ibn Mas'ud? 114 chapters by Zayd ibn Thabit? Or the 116 chapters by Ubay ibn Ka'b? Uh, Precious Rainbow, why they burned the original Mus'hafs? Why did they burn the original manuscripts that used to be written on bones, on stones, on animal skin? Because there are many differences. If, if there are many differences for the Quran, you want to hide it, right? So Uthman wanted to hide it. Like what happened, guys, in 1924. In 1924, guys, when Al-Azhar, the same Al-Azhar who wrote, right? When Al-Azhar wrote the Hafs Quran, right? Did you, do you know what they did? They threw their Quranic Mus'hafs in the Nile River. They threw all the Qurans in the Nile. Right? Why would you throw your Quran in the Nile River in Egypt? To hide, to cover up the many differences. So actually, Prince Philip of the United Kingdom is much older than the Quran of today. <laughs> Why would you throw away Qurans in the Nile River? To hide the many differences. Imagine guys. Imagine. Throwing away the Quran of Allah in the Nile. Uh, Princess Rainbow, are you paying attention, sister? They wanted to hide the differences. They, the scholars, wanted to hide the many differences in the Quran. Right? That's why. This is why Uthman burned all the Qurans. And kept only his Zayd's Mus'haf, right? It was a burn Quran day, right? We actually, Muslims should celebrate the burning of Quran by Uthman ibn Affan, the Caliph at that time, right? If we go to chapter 19, guys, <clears throat> if we go to chapter 19, Ayah 64, Surah Maryam, Chapter Maryam, chapter 19, ayah 64, it says, We do not come down, will the angels say. Do you see the, in, in the translation, they add these words that are highlighted. So who are the ones talking here? The angels. Rob Christian. Rob Christian, are you saying not only Muhammad is the one talking, right? Not only Muhammad is the one talking. Not only Allah is the one talking, but also the angels, Rob Christian? Yes, the angels also talk in the Quran, right? Remember what Al Azhar said in that Irat al Ma'arif, volume 26, page 8167? Muhammad is the speaker in the Quran, Allah speaks in the Quran, and also the angels. 
Uh huh. How many people are, how many persons are talking in this Quran, man? You Muslims claim that the Quran is the speech of Allah, right? You Muslims claim that the Quran is the speech of Allah, but wait. There are many talkers, many speakers in the Quran. Including the angels. Right, Muslims? Including the angels. <clears throat> now, if you go to Tafsir, uh, let me switch this up. To Tafsir Al Jalalain, for the same chapter, chapter 19, IS 64, guys, pay attention. We will understand. Why the angels are the one talking, right? Guys, read with me. When the revelation did not come for a number of days of the Prophet, right? So Jibreel stopped visiting Muhammad for a couple of days, right? Right? The Prophet said to Jibreel, guys, pay attention with me, please. The Prophet of Islam said to Jibreel, What prevents you from visiting us more often than you do? Why are you not coming to see me more often? And so the following was revealed. What was revealed? This ayah. Right? This ayah. And we do not descend except by the command of your Lord. So here the angels are the ones who are talking in the Quran. To him belongs all that is before us, namely ahead of us of the affairs of the hereafter. And all that is behind us of the affairs of this world and all that is between those two, namely all that takes place from this point in time until the coming of the hour, blah, 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 blah. So... As you see, the angels are the one, even according to the tafsir, the angels are the one who are the one talking. And what was the reason that they did not come to Muhammad? Now, if we go to Asbab al nuzul by Al-Wahidi for the same chapter, same ayah, if you scroll down, <clears throat> The ayah is the response to Muhammad. This was narrated by Al-Bukhari from Abi Nuam, from, from such and such, such and such. The angel, Jibreel, took quite a while to come to the Messenger of Allah. And Muhammad is saying, why? Why did you not come to me? Then Jibreel is saying, did I take too long to come to you? The Prophet said he did. Upon the angel said, why should I not delay my coming when you do not polish your teeth? So guys, why did Jibreel stop coming to Muhammad? Because you are not polishing your teeth. You are not brushing your teeth by using miswak. <laughs> which, you know, when we ask Muslims, how do you beat your wife? With a miswak, brother. So you did not brush your teeth. This is why Jibreel is scared. You know, imagine if, if Jibreel comes and you he smells your your uh, you know your mouth i mean uh, jibril is scared brother so jibril before he, jibril can come to the prophet of islam muhammad must brush his teeth keep brushing brother so jibril will come to you another reason is you did not cut your nails muhammad next time make sure to brush your teeth with a muswaq brother else i'm not going to come to you brother Jibreel is saying, also do not forget to cut your nails. Make sure you're, you look really, really sexy when I come visit you, Jibreel is saying. You have to look sexy. You have to smell good, brother. And you also have to not forget to clean the joints of your fingers. Ah, now I understand why Jibreel did not come to Muhammad. Right? Brother, make sure to look, you know, sexy and smell good, brother. Be clean, brother, else Jibril is going to be too scared to come and visit you. Be sexy for Jibril, brother. 
You're sexy and I know it. Bum, 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 bum. You're sexy and I... Okay. Okay, guys. That's what it is. This, this is true story, brother. This is true story, brother. Lord of mercy. I can show you from another place. Chapter 37. As Safat, Ayah 164, where the angels again are talking. There is not one of us who does not have his appointed place, declared angels. See, the angels are the ones speaking. Again, the angels are the ones who are talking in the Quran. The angels, brother? Yes, the angels are the ones talking. And if we go to chapter 53, Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 4, Allah claims to be, this is only a revelation communicated. In huwa illa wahi yuha. In huwa illa wahi yuha. This is only revelation from Allah communicated through Jibreel to Muhammad, brother. You see how this is a huge contradiction, guys? This is a huge, huge, huge contradiction. Allah claims that this is nothing but divine inspiration, revelation, communicated through Jibreel. But we see Muhammad talking, we see the angels talking, right? But Muslims love to tell you, Quran is the speech of Allah, brother, which is false. You are lying, Muslims. So who is actually talking in the Quran? Many. Many, many persons are talking in the Quran. And if we go to chapter 23, Surah Al-Mu'minun, we can see really a damaging part. This is talking about the sperm drop, right? Nutfa. This is talking how an embryology is being done. I don't want to go into the amazing scientific miracles of the Quran. That's not the topic of today. But who is the one here in the end talking? So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Who is the one speaking, man? Who is the one speaking? Anyone? Brother, who is the one talking here? Is this Allah? Is Allah saying? Is Allah saying? So blessed is Allah, the best of creators? Who is the one talking, guys? Anyone? Anyone has an idea? Does anyone has an idea who is the one here talking? Ramfer? No, not Mo. Not Muhammad. You're wrong, my friend. No, Irene, you're wrong. No, Peter the Wall, you're wrong. Frau, you're wrong. Come on, guys. Who is the one who said... So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. No, Allah did not say that, one punch hero. You are not paying attention. No, it's not Elvis. It's not Jibril. No, not Jibril. Come on, guys. Come on. No. Exactly, TM Crosspools. Ibn Abi Sarh. Have you heard of Ibn Abi Sarh? The guy who was writing this ayah for Muhammad, let's say on paper, on animal skill, on bones, right? The Quran used to be written on animal skin in the time of Muhammad, right? Or bones or stones, let's say, right? So the one who was writing this ayah down when it was so-called divinely inspired by Jibreel, right, to Muhammad, Ibn Abi Sarh, so blessed Allah, tabarak Allah, fa tabarak Allah, ahsan al said Ibn Abi Sarh. Describe, Ibn Abi Sarh was the scribe, was the scribe of Muhammad, the one who wrote the ayahs down for Muhammad. Right? So what did Muhammad said as response? Write it down as you just said it, because that's how Allah sent it through Jibreel to me, brother. Then Ibn Abi Sarah thought, hey, I just said these words. Those were not given to me by Muhammad to write them down. Ibn Abi Sarah said, hey, if I can 
fabricate ayahs of the Quran, that means I can be a prophet like Muhammad too. And the guy left Islam. Yes, Ramfer, his full name is Abdullah bin Abi Sarh. Exactly. So Ibn Abi Sarh left Islam when he noticed Muhammad is a scam. So who is the one talking here? Right? Ibn Abi Sarh. This highlighted words that you see here was fabricated by a Muslim who left Islam when he found out that Muhammad is a scam. And he went to the Kaaba, guys, when he left Islam and he was afraid to be killed by Muhammad. He took ropes of the Kaaba and he started to clinch himself to the, to the clothes of the Kaaba. Can you imagine? Muhammad ordered him to be killed, right? And it was Uthman who saved him, who told Muhammad, please don't kill him, right? So this Abdullah bin Abi Sarh, he was the one who did the talking here. Did you catch it? So guys, the persons who are actually talking in the Quran, if you have been watching the entire live show, you have seen that Allah is the one doing talking. Muhammad was talking in the Quran. The angels, i.e. Jibreel, did the talking. And many others. Even the jinn speaks. And as we mentioned just moments ago, Abdullah ibn Abi Sahih, the scribe of Muhammad, talked in the Quran. He said, Allahu ahsanul khaliqeen. And Muhammad said, write it down as, as you just mentioned it. Allah sent it to me like that. Jibreel sent it to me like that, brother. And this guy left Islam because of it. So Muslims, today we prove to you, we prove to you that many people are talking in the Quran, not only Allah. Muhammad talked in the Quran. The angels told, talked in the Quran. Even the jinn speak in the Quran and many others speak in the Quran. Many truth prevail, not only Allah, many, 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 many people. Many persons, many creation, cre creations are talking in the Quran. And they dare to tell you, right? They dare to tell you that the Quran is the speech of Allah. And today, we, guys, we also mentioned that there are, there's a huge difference in divine re revelation between the Bible and the Quran. Right? This is why Muslims are so confused about the Bible. Because the Bible, the way of sending down divine revelation is like this. People of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, right? They were inspired by the Holy Spirit and they wrote the Bible down. Around 40 people wrote the Bible down, like Moses, right? Who wrote the first five books. But the Quran, Allah of the Quran is a different God. He's certainly not the God of the Holy Bible, Jehovah, the I Am. Allah sends down his so-called divine revelation through Jibreel and Jibreel gave them to Muhammad. This is why Muslims are confused when they say the Injil of Isa is lost brother. The Injil of Isa is lost. They are confused. They have no idea that the Bible was not sent down like the Quran. They have no idea. They never studied the Bible to understand this, right? Muslims. And we showed you that the Quran has been corrupted by Muslim hands when they added a chapter like Al-Fatiha, right? The seven often repeated verses, which is Al-Fatiha to according to the tafsir. Al-Jalalin, do you see it? Same chapter, same Ayah 87. The seven often repeated verses are Surah Al-Fatiha. This is why Ibn Mas'ud did not include his in his Quranic Mus'haf. Chapter 1. He had only 111 chapters. Thank you, Sarah. God bless you. Sarah says, this topic is amazing, Rob Christian, but I got to sleep now. God bless you. You did a great job. Thank you, sister. May Jesus bless you. Bless your family. Thank you for watching. 
Peace of Christ to you, sister. See you another time. Do we have any Muslim guys? Uh, someone is asking me to call. Yes, you can call. Hello, you're live on air, my friend. Welcome. Hey, Rob, Christian. How are you doing today? Hey, my friend. I'm good. How, how about you? By the way, your uh, your video is showing, but I don't see your face, so just to let you know. Go ahead, my friend. Yes. Um, well, I have a question. Um, yes. Isn't it true, since we're on the topic of the Quran and everything, so before I even say what I have to say, I want to verify something. Is it true that the Quran is uncreated according to Muslims? Yes. The vast majority of Muslims, actually the Muslims of today, have to agree, all, all together, they have to agree that the Quran is uncorrupted. But uh, in the early generations of Islam, right, you had the Mutazilites. The Mutazilites actually said, if you're going to call the Quran uncreated, eternal, together with Allah, that means you are doing shirk, you are associating the Quran, you are placing the Quran on the same level of Allah, that's shirk. And they are actually, were getting slaughtered, right, for refuting, for saying that the Quran is created. So if you are saying that the Quran today, if you say that the Quran is not created, that means you are out of Islam. Correct. They have to believe that it's uncreated. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm happy you said that because it's a problem with saying that the Quran is uncreated. And this is why. Because within the Quran, you have past tense words like Allah breathed, which is a um, past tense word. Mm -hmm. So something uncreated cannot contain it's impossible for it to contain past tense exactly because past because past present and future tense yes those type of words that are used in in the quran are the ingredients of a historical timeline yes. because a story a story is created over time so the quran tells a story so therefore, it's impossible for it to be a uncreated book. And let me give you an example. It's like, mm -hmm. it's almost like saying water has forever been frozen. Exactly. That doesn't make sense. I agree. Sense. It's like, yeah. so you can't say in a story where water has forever been frozen, you can't say the water freeze like it says Allah breathed. Because yes. if you say the water freeze, that means you are saying a past tense. Yeah, you're doing it in the past. That's that's not possible because you have to say it as, as it is now, right? Because it's happening right. now. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's all, another good example. It's almost like saying you went to see an uncreated movie. Yes. How can you see an uncreated movie when a movie is the makeup of past tense present tense and future tense exactly That's, that creates the plot of the movie correct so it's impossible for um the the quran to be uncreated because of that what i just said exactly it's impossible exactly. and i have said that to some muslims recently and they just get stuck they don't know what to say no of because course. yeah they well actually my friend deep inside if you have a really I really, um, there are not many, but I know there are some sincere Muslims who actually do uh, research. They are actually seekers of truth. If you just think about the fact that we, you have an, 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 an eternal, uncreated being like Allah, as they claim. Allah is eternal. Allah is uncreated, uncorrupted. How can you have beside him a Quran? that is uncreated, uncorrupted, and eternal. Basically, you have two things, which is Allah and the Quran, that are co-equal, co-existent with one another. That's blasphemy, that's shirk. But Muslims actually, 
they don't think. Most Muslims don't think about this. That doesn't and make sense, say, right? It doesn't make sense. And they also yeah. say that, well, let me verify this. Do they say that the Quran is the words of Allah? Yep. Okay, now, that doesn't make sense because so, how can you claim ownership to something that you didn't create? Because exactly. if, it's if it's uncreated, then how can you say it's yours? That's like me saying exactly. this picture that I didn't create, this painting belongs to Guys, me. Guys, did you did you pay attention to what the gentleman said? Can you repeat what you just said, my friend, for the people? Maybe he, they didn't catch what you said. Repeat, please. Guys, pay everybody, attention. Pay attention. Everybody, they say that the Quran is uncreated. So how can it be the words of Allah if he didn't create it? How can you claim ownership to something that you didn't create? It exactly. would be like me pointing at a picture in an art gallery and saying, that painting is mine, but I didn't create it. Exactly. So I, <laughs> That's a good yeah. point, guys. I can claim ownership to something that you didn't create if it's uncreated. Brother, you know, what the, you know what the answer is? Yeah. Allahu Alam. Allah knows best, brother. <laughs> that would be that's what that's what they would say. And can I say one more thing? Yes, Just another go thing. Go ahead, man. Okay. Friend. Is it true that they say Muhammad is the last prophet, the seal of the prophets? Yes. The seal of all the prophets, brother. He is the last final prophet, brother. He's the greatest of them all. We about to get that busted right now. Go ahead. We about to get that right now. If you if you uh if you if you can put Sura 381 on the screen, do you have the um yes just Hilali, uh, Hilali, the sure. Hilali chapter three and then I 81 you said yeah 81 okay so just a second my friend yeah yes okay Hilali Khan translation yes okay go ahead my friend you want me to read it for you. Uh, yeah, you can read it. Okay. And remember when Allah took the covenant of the prophets saying, take whatever I gave you from the book and hikmah, understanding of the laws of Allah, etc. And afterwards there will come to you a messenger, which is Muhammad, confirming what is with you. You must then believe in him and help him. Allah said, do you agree? And will you take up my covenant which i conclude with you they said we agree he said then bear witness i am with you among the witnesses for this all right what you just read has destroyed islam it has destroyed islam and i'm gonna tell you what because muslims say that during the life of muhammad mm -hmm. there were no prophets but yes. in this sort of 81 it clearly says that there will be prophets during the lifetime of Muhammad and Muhammad will be sent to these prophets and these prophets and this messenger Muhammad who's going to be mm -hmm. sent to these prophets will confirm what they have in their possession. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So and this is and this creates another contradiction. Mm -hmm. To something that Muhammad said, because exactly in the, in the hadith, if you can pull this up, um, the hadith of Abu Huraira, Sahih Muslim, Book Thirty, Number uh, Fifty Eight Thirty Five. What is the hadith number? Sahih Muslim. Hadith Sahih number. Muslim. Yes. Yes. Sahih Muslim, Book Thirty, Number Fifty Eight Thirty Five. Thirty Eight. 5835 No Sahih Muslim book yes. 30 number 5835 35 yes Okay Let's see if I can find it Uh 58 come again my friend 58 book and then 30. Yeah 5835 35 mm -hmm. Yes maybe I hope yes I think I got it I hope this is the hadith let me read it I most, I am most akin to Jesus Christ. There's nothing called Jesus Christ, by the way. It's Isa, right? Anyway, mm -hmm. 
I am most akin to Jesus Christ among the whole of mankind, and all the prophets are of different mothers, but belong to one religion, and no prophet was raised between me and Jesus. Sahih Muslim, you... hadith number 2365b. That's the one, right? Now, okay. Right, that's true. Did everybody catch that? Listen what it says. I am most akin to Jesus Christ among the whole of mankind, and all the prophets are of different mothers, but belong to one religion, and no prophet was raised between me and Jesus. That, what he just said, is a contradiction to Surah 381, because he just said that there were no prophets. In this hadith, he said that there are no prophets that was raised between him and Jesus. But yeah. when you read Surah 381, it clearly tells you that there would be prophets alive during the lifetime of Muhammad. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> spread his mission yeah. so that that's a clear contradiction right there yep and it's another problem in that hadith as well because he says that and this is just a side note thing he said that all of the prophets are of different mothers but belong to one religion yes. and that's a lie because aaron and moses they have the same mother named Joshebed. bam <laughs> So Come again, and repeat that again, repeat that again, repeat what you said. Okay. All right, in that hadith that we just read. Guys, pay attention. He said, listen, people, and listen, Um, what's his name? The Muslim who always calls in. Yeah, uh, I think you're talking about this uh, uh, shirk guy, ultimate shirk, that one? Yeah, ultimate, yeah. ultimate shirk. Listen, yeah. listen to this lie that your prophet said. Yeah. Your, your Muhammad said that he said um and all the prophets are of different mothers yes. but belong to one religion and no prophet was raised between me and jesus exactly. he lied because aaron and moses who are both considered prophets in islam they had the same mother named joshabed this is spanking 101 guys this is spanking of muhammad 101 we about to prove it to you right now. Let's pull up the verse in the Bible yeah. where it uh it talks about Joshebed um being the mother of Aaron and and Moses. So give me give me one moment, uh, yeah. Mr. Rob Christian. Yes, no problem. I'm look because I want I want to say the verse so they won't have you know yes so they won't have no excuse or. Uh, you want from the Bible, my friend? Yeah, it's it's in Numbers. It's somewhere in Numbers, the Book of Numbers. Okay, just a second. It says, is it, is, "Are you talking maybe uh, about?" Uh, I I, um, I think you're talking about Exodus six twenty. I think here, it's on the screen. It says. Amram married his father's sister, Yochobet, who bore him Aaron and Moses. Amram yes, lived 137 yes. years. Yeah. Yeah, that's so right. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Yes. That's so. So, but when you look at a hadith, he said that the prophets, none of the prophets had the same mother. So what can they say now? That's a lie. Yes. Exactly. And I got another clear um, lie that he told. Yeah. Check this out. Check this out. I'm going to pull up a hadith where he said, um, he said, uh, he said that Christians and he said Muslims dye their beards because Christians and Muslims don't dye their beards. Are you familiar with that one? Yeah. Uh, I hope I can find it. Just a second. Mm. This is stuff that you can use, like, okay, I, I already got it right here. Um, hold up, hold up. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I got I, it. I got it too. Uh, so I think you're talking about Sunnah Abi Daud. Let me put it on the screen. Yeah. The Prophet said, the Prophet saying, Jews and Christians do not dye their beards, so act differently from them. So you have to dye your beards. This is Sahih Hadith, Sunnah Nabi Dawood, 
Hadith number 4203. So now you have to dye your you beard. Can, you can kill the 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 myth that Muhammad is a prophet with this one hadith alone because he says that Jews and Christians do not dye their beard. That's a lie. It's countless Jews and Christians who dye their beard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But brother, those are the Jews and Christians in the time of Muhammad, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say, but he's but this hadith is good for for eternity. These are the yeah, words yeah. of a prophet. Yeah, because so, they have to follow the Sunnah till today, right? So this acts right. also. This is also for the future, exactly. So if you are Christian and you will, and you and if you in a if you are a Christian and you are in a debate with a Muslim, if you have a have a gray beard, this yeah. is how you can defeat a Muslim. You can pull this hadith up where it says that Jews and Christians do not dye their beard. Yeah. Buy a, bo a box of hair dye and dye your beard right in front of the Muslim and laugh in his face. Yeah. Tell him, I'm a Christian and I'm dyeing my beard. But your prophet said Jews and Christians, they don't dye their beards. Yeah. I have a question for you, my friend. What do you think about uh, today's topic that uh, actually Muslims always have claimed that the Quran you know uh is the speech of allah but today we we you know we we are shocked and we found out that not only allah is the one doing the speaking or the talking in the quran muhammad mm -hmm. is talking in the quran the angels are talking in the quran and even a guy his by the name of abdullah ibn abi sarah who said tabarak allah ahsanu khalqib glory to allah right uh all praise to allah who is the creator right it's the best of creators so what do you think well, about think, it all right i think about it and you brought some up, something up to my mind um back to what i was saying it's impossible for the quran to be an uncreated book because you just said it contains the names of people but all of those people who names are in the quran they also have created destinies so how can you fit created destinies within a book that's supposed to be uncreated mm -hmm. because because adam had a created destiny and his name is in the quran and there is a hadith where adam and moses was in a quarrel and adam said to moses how can you blame me for such and yes. such when allah is the one who wrote down my destiny 40 years before i was created yes. so how can you have a character in a book who has a uncreated who has a created destiny but you're saying that the book is uncreated so that's another problem yeah how can you say the quran is uncreated but yet it contains past tense words exactly and characters who have um uncreated destinies yeah and not only that there's also no free will for adam because it was <clears throat> allah who wrote the sin right on adam 40 years before his creation right right so there is no free will and uh, you know disaster on top of disaster i mean if if allah is the one putting the sins on you before you are created like in the case of adam what's the reason for praying what's the reason for doing hajj what's the reason for doing uh, all kind of those rituals you know that you that you do giving zakat to the poor, praying five times a day. I mean, Allah already decided for you to go to hellfire or Jannah, right? What's the reason what for, for all those rituals in Islam? All the pill, and, pills of Islam, yeah. And I was looking at a video that you did yesterday that gets um, Islam busted even more because you did a video yesterday saying that the reason why, no, 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 I think it was apostate prophet. I was looking at apostate prophet. He said that um, the reason why um, Allah created Muslims is so that they can worship. Only him. to be worshipped, yeah. Only to be worshipped, exactly. Yeah. I'm about to show a contradiction. Can you pull that verse up? Uh, just a second. I'm about to show a major contradiction. Hope you got your ear right, cleaned out your ear, ultimate start. Yeah, yeah, just a second. I think I got it for you. Mm. I think it's chapter 51. Let me go there. Chapter 51. I, uh, let's see. That's Ayah 56, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, and I, i.e. Allah, I created not the jinns and the humans except they should wor worship me. So Allah created mankind and jinn according to the Quran to only worship him. Exactly. Oh, that's a lie because yeah. I was I was watching Christian Prince the other day mm -hmm. and he put up a tafsir to this verse about the nufta, like the sperm where Allah, but in the tafsir it says that um, Allah decreed the deeds that you will do of the of everything that you would do. Allah decreed it before you was born. Yes, it's, there's also in the Quran that says that whoever comes to Islam is by the will of of Allah, and whoever is led astray is by the will of Allah. Yes. So how can those two, those two um, constants, they can't exist side by side with each other. You can't mm -hmm. say in one verse that Allah created uh, Muslims to worship him because they say that everybody is born a Muslim. You can't say that, that Allah's will in one verse was that for everybody to worship him. Yeah. I think, it, that, I think that's chapter 9, ayah 51, if I'm not mistaken. Say, right. no, nothing shall ever happen to us except what Allah has ordained for us. Chapter right. 9, Surah so, At-Tawbah, ayah 51. So if Allah decreed everything, that means he decreed the people who don't worship him. So how mm. can you say that he created? He created everybody to worship him, and at the same time, he decreed some people not to worship him. Yes, exactly. That class, that's a that's a contradiction. Exactly. Yeah, that's the contradiction. Exactly. That's a major clash right there. You can't say, because think about it. I created. Can you read that verse again? So I'm I'm gonna make sure I get it right. Yeah. Uh, let me read it for you, my friend. Say, uh, sorry, uh, the other verse, and I. All, I, Allah, I created not the jinns and the humans, except they should worship me. Right. So he's saying that he created, it didn't even say Muslims, it said humans. So yeah. that includes everybody. So he's saying that he created the jinn yeah. and the humans to worship him. But at the same time, in other passages, he decreed that some people follow him and some people don't. Yeah. That's a clash in ideologies right there. It exactly. don't make sense. Exactly. Illa liyabduni. Yeah. Only to worship me. Illa yabduni. So that means you have they are all you are only created. The only job uh, for Allah, He created you only that you are going to worship Him. Right? And and this this tells me something about this Allah. This Allah must be so proud. This Allah must be so lonely that he only created and only created mankind for him to worship him, right? So if we go to the Bible, actually, God, who is a loving, merciful God, he created mankind to share his infinite love with mankind. But Allah, on the other hand, he created mankind and jinn to worship him. This actually tells us a lot about what kind of God this Allah is, right? And that and also proves that Allah and, and God of the Holy Bible are different kind of gods. Totally different kind of gods. And according to the Quran, then, um, Rob Christian, me and you, we were decreed by Allah not mm -hmm. to worship him. Yes, exactly. But at, the same time, but at the same time, it says he created us to worship him. Yeah. So his decree... <laughs> His own decree goes against his own desire exactly. of creating worship him. That don't make sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Allah does not know what he wants. Allah doesn't right. really know what he wants. That's actually what it means in other in other words. And, and in Islam, um, you don't create your own destiny. Every, Allah creates everything. So what it, another thing that it shows is that Allah is the devil. He is God and he is the devil in Islam. Because if he decrees everything, because mm -hmm. it says that no calamity befalls man unless by the will of Allah. Yeah. So that means every calamity that happens is by the will of Allah. Yeah. So how can he punish you? Let me for tell something you, you, you are reminding me of a guy, br uh, brother. Uh, you remind me of a guy who used to sit on portal. Guys, pay attention. There was a guy who used to debate us on the Paul Talk 
platform where Christian Prince used to sit on, where, you know, I used to go to back in the old days. This guy was debating us almost every day. And later we found out that this guy, he left Islam because he made a video. I think his video is still on YouTube. If I'm not mistaken, he, he goes by the name of Sword of Allah or something. I can I think the video is still online. He says, are you telling me Allah only created us to worship him? Are we only slaves? Are we only created to be slaves? That's it. <laughs> and because of that, he left Islam, guys. Yeah, I, I forgot his name. Let, I, maybe I can find uh, this video. But you re, yeah, I, I wanted to mention that because you reminded me of him, my friend. Yeah. Can I tell the audience something? Listen, yeah. if Allah decrees everything, the Quran says that no calamity befalls man unless by the will of Allah. So if Allah decrees everything, and if yeah. you commit a sin, how can he punish you? And he and you are the and you just doing the decree that he wrote for your life. So yeah. how can he punish something that he wrote for your life? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that means Allah is is playing god and the devil because mm -hmm. satan is a fallen angel in islam but his life was also written down by allah yeah so that means allah is satan and god in islam and it means that since allah decrees everything for you in islam that means that um your practicing of islam is in vain Mm -hmm. Because there is also a hard deep to back up what I'm saying. Um, Aisha was at a funeral, and she said something about a child had went to be amongst the birds of paradise. And Muhammad corrected her. He said, "No, Aisha." He said, "Per adventure, if this child, if it was written for this child to go to paradise, it would be amongst you know yeah. the birds of paradise. If not yeah. it would go to the hellfire." <laughs> so what that means is, as a Muslim, you can do all of the deeds, you can do hajj, you can pay zakat, you can make salat, you can do all of that. Mm -hmm. But if it's not written for you to go to paradise, you will still be sent to eternal fire. Yeah. So that means mm -hmm. Islam is in vain. The exactly. entire religion is in vain because they don't have a free will concept. Exactly. There is no so free will. Exactly. Free will concept. Because they don't have a free will concept, that means that in Islam, everybody is just basically robots. Yeah. We well, like programs that yeah. don't have any say so about anything because everything is decreed by Allah. Exactly. So exactly. even the people who attack Islam, who they call the Islamophobes, mm -hmm. is by the decree of Allah that people like Rob Christian exist yeah. and people like Christian Prince exist. But they say it's a test. Yeah, How Allah, Allah a made me, actually, Allah made me the one who is exposing his yeah. prophet every day, every day in, day out, right? Allah made Allah. Christian prince. Allah made all these uh, Christian uh, polemicists attacking yeah. Islam and exposing the prophet of Islam. So we should blame Allah. Don't blame me, Muslims. Blame Allah for putting someone like Rob Christian uh, on this planet to expose him almost every week live on air, right? Yes. So should, we and should blame Allah. And like Adam, he said, don't blame me. Blame Allah for who is the one. Blame Allah. He's, he's the one who put this sin on me 40 years before my creation. Why are you blaming me, brother? And Rob Christian, do they not say that it's a test, that certain things happen in your life as a test? Yeah. How can they say it's a test? How can you... How can you fit test and decree exactly. in the same? It, it just clashes with each other. That's a it's huge contradiction, my friend. It's a huge contradiction. My friend, you did you call me? Did you call me to to show the contradictions over and over? <laughs> I, I'm just expounding upon it because I don't think yeah. a lot of people. Guys, did you hear what he just said? Guys, did you hear what he said? How can something no. be a test if Allah already decided for you what will happen? What what you will do? Allah is the right. one who decides to you, for you that you're going to sin. Allah is the one who decided for you that you, to, tomorrow you're going to rob a uh, market or, 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 or maybe a pawn shop, right? Allah is the one who's doing, uh, forcing you to do that because Allah put that decree on you. 
what test, what shish kebab, what falafel would Christian Prince say, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just, it's just so, it's just so uh, silly. I mean, exactly. It don't make sense, but exactly. you know. Thank even, you, thank even, you for calling, my friend. Uh, you know, maybe yeah, we'll yeah. have some new callers. That was really amazing. It's always a blessing when you call in, brother. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you, my friend. Keep calling us. God bless. Have a nice day. Right, thank you. God bless. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yeah. You see, guys, test life is a test according to the Muslims. But, you know, how 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 is Allah going to test you if Allah is doing all and everything on you? Allah is the one who decreed for you that tomorrow you're going to rob a bank. But let me test you, brother. That doesn't make sense, Muslims. Why are you Muslims not thinking? Think, Muslims. God gave you a set of brains. Why are you not using your brains? How can God test you, but at the same time, the same God, this Allah of yours, is the one who is doing everything for you. Allah is causing you to rob a bank. Allah is causing you to maybe go and take a van and ride 10 people, you know, kill 10 people maybe in Germany. Maybe in England, right? Using vehicle jihad. Allah is the one who, who made that happen, right? Not you. So how is Allah going to test you? You tell me, Muslims. Please think. Guys, I wanted to show this video to you. This is the guy that I... Uh, just a second. This is the guy... Why would we be slaves? You know, in the Bible, we're... Guys, just uh, let me go back. This is the guy who left Islam. Mm. Why is it coming out like this? I have no idea. Anyway, let me play this video. It's a very old video. Watch. Well, hello, Sword of Allah. So you're famous now. Hmm? Everybody's looking at your videos. Everybody's making videos about you. And I know you're online to see them. Of course you wouldn't miss out opening up YouTube and seeing what people are saying about you. So I want to say something too. Congratulations for having doubts about Islam. You know, you seem to be overly concerned in your videos about losing your cookies. Hmm? Islam doesn't teach that we inherit a sinful nature, but the Holy Bible says we do. I suggest that you get back to your Bible. Hey, dude. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I just called in to refute you all these lies you're telling about Islam. Yes, yes. Hey, you you briefly mentioned Zaid. Um, do you know of any attempt to fill in the blanks in the Hafs Isnad? Because what happens is, you know, on one side you have Uthman Ali, Ubay, and Zaid, who narrated to Abu Abd al-Rahman to Azam to Hafs. But of course, like you mentioned today, when you look at Zaid, he collected the Quran from palm stalks, stones, leather hides, and from the memories of men. So there needs to be an isnad that says who wrote on the stones, who wrote on the palm stalks, who wrote on the manuscripts, and whose memories he used. And there also needs to be an isnad that says which surahs Zaid got this information for. So, you know, you can't have one isnad for the Quran, for Hafs. You have to have, you know, chapters 1 through 4 came from this stone. Chapters 5 through 10 came from the memories of these men and, and so forth. So, do you know of any attempt to fill in these blanks? Okay. It's, <clears throat> no, I, I can't find anything on this at all. It's just interesting that, you know, these claims of oral preservation rest on isnads, but the isnad 
is incomplete. It just stops at Zaid and, and, of course, presumably goes to Muhammad. But you have Abu Bakr ordering this recension in 633, about a year after Muhammad's dead, and the Quran is already fragmented in so many different places. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a problem. And then, of course, you move forward to Al-Hajjaj, and he destroys everything that came before him. And then you go to the Abbasids, and they said, I mean, they take Al-Hajjaj's Quran that's in Medina, and they set that aside, and they issue their own text. So it's just one cycle of destruction and revision after another. <clears throat> Yeah, of course, the, the Qurans that they were importing for education differed with one another, and so they needed to make a standardized edition, and then following in the footsteps of Uthman and al judge, they destroyed competing copies, and so they just dumped a bunch in the Nile River. <clears throat> Even in 1924, yeah. <laughs> And you know what's what's interesting about this is even when you look at the Kira'at, you know, the 10th century, like you mentioned with your previous callers, a very interesting time because, like you said, you have the Mutazilites who lost the debate, and so the Quran from the 10th century then becomes eternal. That is now Sunni Orthodox doctrine. Mm -hmm. And there are people in the comments say, section saying they can't hear you. Yeah, it's, my sound was gone. Uh... Oh, okay. Something happened. I, I think I, I, I can be heard again, right, guys? Okay, okay. Go on, my friend. Okay. Yeah, so, so the 10th century, we still have someone saying your mic is off. Maybe this comment is lagging behind. Let's, mm, yeah. yes. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, okay, someone okay. says it's okay. No, okay. Cool, yeah. So, um, like, like you mentioned with your previous caller, in the 10th century, the, yeah. the Metazolites lose the debate, and now the eternal Quran is becoming Orthodox Sunni doctrine. But and, and with this comes the lack of critical attitude towards the Quran because now it becomes a heresy to investigate the Quran. And so these scholars, the Muslim scholars, turn their critical attention from their own text, which has now become eternal, to the Bible. And they simply set the bounds, you know, within traditional Sunni orthodoxy of what the Quran was and what sort of scrutiny was to be allowed. Um, as it relates to it, and they yeah. directed their attention to the Bible. Yeah. But at the same time, Mujahid and several others are forced to establish different but equally canonical readings because the divisions in the Quran are so great, once again, they're causing problems among the Muslims. Exactly, yeah. So this is just really interesting. In, in the same century, you have Muslims saying the Quran is eternal, and yet such great divisions about the Quranic text arising that they need to establish, hey, they're all equal. They're yeah, all and these are, the, these are the first Muslims, right? Don't forget, we're talking about the first Muslims who disagree. One group says, no, the Quran cannot be uh, uncreated, uh, co coexistent with Allah. And the other ones say, no, no, the Quran is uncreated, uh, eternal, uncorrupted. So that means, right, we have a thing called the Quran that already exists with Allah, uncreated, eternal. So, and, and as the gentleman who called before you, he said, that's not possible. How can, how is this not shirk, right? How is this not shirk when you have a so-called book, right, on uh, on the tablets in, in Jannah, right, which they call Luh al-Mahfuz. How is it coexisting? How is Allah the owner of a book that is never being created. That, that doesn't make sense, right? 
Yeah, it, it feeds into the discussion of the attributes of yeah, Allah and, and exactly. where the Quran exactly falls with respect to that and how that interfaces with Tawheed. So, interesting. Yeah, well, I just wanted to know if you had anything on that Isnad because... Um, no, wow. no, it's, I, it's, it's it's incomplete. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a disaster. And on top of that, as we mentioned in an earlier live show, my friend, Hafs Hafs is called a liar. All of his hadith is matruk. All mm -hmm. of the hadith of Hafs is rejected, and he's not not only rejected. He's called a liar, right? He's called a liar. How, right? According uh, to one of the very golden chain as Ali Dawa uh, mentioned on, on his video that hadith comes from Suhaih al-Bukhari anyone who lies about the Prophet of Islam let him take a seat in hellfire since Muslims of today the vast majority of Muslims today use the Quran of Hafs who, who is considered to be a liar why are you right why are you using the Quran of a guy who is in hellfire, who is called a liar, who lied about the Prophet of Islam, right? Yeah, well, this is the miracle of Allah, that someone who was so bad at Hadith could be so perfect when it came to the Quran. Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, he's, he's in hellfire, but at the same time, they are using the Quran of a guy who is burning for eternity in hellfire because he was lying in the Hadith about the Prophet, which is... It's, it's devastating. Muslims actually don't think. How can you trust a liar who is in hellfire? According to Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, right? If you are lying about me, said Muhammad, if you are lying about me, take, let him take this guy who's lying, let him take his seat in hellfire. How are you accepting the Quran, the recitation of the Quran from Hafs who was a liar and according to Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, he is now in hellfire. You know, Islam, disaster on top of disaster on top of disaster. Yeah, interesting development from the 20th century. You have the Hafs Quran standardized, yeah. and then the Hafs Quran becomes the perfectly preserved Quran, and all of these inconsistencies yeah. simply disappear because Muslims are still doing what they were doing in the 10th century. They yeah. exclude their own text from critical scrutiny, and in and uh, you know, subject other texts of other religions to the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, keep up the good work, man. Thank you. Thank you for calling, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to our dear uh, friend and brother Islam Critiques' his YouTube channel. He is doing amazing job and a lot of interesting videos. Support him, please. Thank you for calling, my friend. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, that was really a. Nice call. Thank you for calling Islam Critique, guys. Always make sure to call our brothers. Uh, sorry, uh, support our brothers in Christ. Like Islam Critique. I really enjoy his videos. I also am subscribed to his YouTube channel. And I love all of his videos, especially about... Uh, the mystics of Muhammad, the mystic Muhammad, the mystic prophet of Islam, who used to go to many Jewish mystical uh, stories and he made it Quran. So as you see guys, as we mentioned, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, anyone who lies about the prophet of Islam, let him take his seat in hellfire. But according to many famous and trustful scholars like Imam al-Bukhari, وقال al-Bukhari تركوه Imam Bukhari said وقال Imam Muslim matruk he is rejected and not only that he is called a liar he is called a liar كذاب he is a liar and he is not trustworthy how do you, how do you follow the recitation of Hafs, who is a liar? He is not to be trusted. He is matruk al-hadith. All of his hadith is rejected. What did Muhammad say? Anyone who lies about me, let him take a seat in hellfire. Why are you using the recitation of Hafs, who is now in hellfire, according to Muhammad himself? 
Muslims, please think. Do it for yourself. Don't do it for me. Do it for yourselves. It's your salvation, Muslims. It's your salvation, not mine. All right? So we have Imam Bukhari. We have Imam Muslim. We have Ahmad ibn Hanbal. We have a Nisai. Laysa bi thiqa. He is not to be trusted. Matruk al-Hadith. All of his Hadith is rejected. Muslims. All of his Hadith is rejected. Let me look up the Hadith for you guys before Muslims start to call us liars. Here is the Hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated on us from Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith number 108, narrated on us, the fact which stops me from narrating a great number of hadith to you is that the Prophet said, whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire, said Muhammad. So according to the words of Muhammad himself, we can conclude because Hafs, he lied in his hadith, he is called not to be trusted, he is called a liar, kathaban, right? A liar, matruk al hadith, according to the Prophet of Islam, Hafs, the one that you took your recitation from, is in hellfire. This is not me speaking, this is your prophet. This is not me speaking, this is Imam Bukhari. This is Imam Muslim. Matruk, Tarakuhu, Waqala Nisai, Laysa Bithika. He's not to be trusted. He is not trustworthy. Matruk al Hadith. All of the Hadith is rejected. So if you are lying in your Hadith about your own prophet, According to Muhammad, whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Disaster. What a disaster, Muslims. What a disaster. Taraku. Yeah. So why are you? Why are you? Why are you using the recitation of a guy who is finally took his seat in hellfire? Hafs is having a nice barbecue with shaitan in hellfire, but at the same time, you Muslims of today are hypocrites. You are using the recitation of a liar and a guy who all of his hadith is rejected not only that he used to steal books or borrow books guys sorry he used to borrow books and did not bring them back to their owners and claiming that he is the one who wrote those books huh? uh, let me see what uh Andy Shannon says, a Atrop Christian, can you show the narration of Aisha where she tells of her marriage and consummation? A Muslim in the chat thinks I'm lying. About what exactly? About what? That she was nine when she consumed, when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her? Is that the hadith that you're talking about? Is that the one you're talking about? This hadith you mean? It was narrated that Abu Ubaidah said, Aisha said, the messenger of Allah married me when I was nine and I lived with him for nine years. Is that the one? 
Not only that, Aisha used to play with dolls, right? And she called them her children, her daughters. Are you allowed to play with dolls? Are you allowed to play with dolls in Islam when you are reaching puberty? The answer is no. Since she called her dolls her daughters and she's still playing with them, that means Aisha did not reach puberty yet. Uh oh. And that's also confirmed in Fath al Bari. Fath al Bari, which is basically the commentary on the hadith. Thank you, Joe P. I appreciate it. Right? Fath al Bari confirms that Aisha used to play with her dolls when Muhammad took her and consummated the marriage with her. That means Aisha, according to Islam, Aisha did not reach puberty yet when Muhammad had sex with her. Yeah. Let's see if we can show you the hadith on the screen. Look what Aisha is saying. I used to play... Let me make this smaller. I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet. And my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's Messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves. But the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden. But it was allowed for Aisha at the time. As she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty yet. Do you see it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Brother, this hadith is da'if, brother. No, it's Sahih al-Bukhari. Muhammad was certainly not a pedophile, guys. Come on. How can you say that about Muhammad? Certainly Muhammad was not a pedophile. Right? This must be... This must be a prophet of God, brother. Do you have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who can tell us why you claim that the Quran is the speech of Allah? But when we investigate the Quran, we see all kinds of people talking in the Quran. Any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us life? It doesn't say that RC. RC. It doesn't say that RC. Right. Where is Fifi? Where is Mimi? Where is Lily to help the Muslims? It doesn't say that RC. <clears throat> Do we have a real Muslim here who has the courage and the knowledge to call us life and refute our work? Our Skype is open. You can call us live on air. My Skype ID is D or uh, Christian. What, what happened, guys? Are we out of Islam? Are we out of Muslims? Islam is peace. Anta munafiq, anta jaban ibn jaban. All right? You are a coward. You are a hypocrite. You don't dare to call me right here, right now. We are live. I don't need you to come and see my face to debate me you have something to say you call yourself a man call me i mean talking chat is cheap brother you're a liar brother call me why are you so scared to call me yeah uh sila lumen you remember the 
the report by Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, a couple years ago, I think it was in 2006, Al Jazeera, who is the number one news channel in the Arab world, they claim that 16,000 Muslims a day leave Islam in Africa. That's only the continent Africa. What about the Muslims in the rest of the world? Do you know how many Muslims that is in a year? In Africa, guys, let's say 16,000 Muslims leave Islam in Africa. That's 356 days in a year, right? Which means more than 6 million and 205,000 Muslims leave Islam in Africa a year. Buy, buy, buy Islam. Exactly, Hafsa. What about the rest of the world? What about Saudi Arabia? What about Syria? What about Iraq? What about Iran? Really? Muslims, Muslims, Islam is the fastest shrinking religion of the world. That's, that's, that is only Africa and only Africa alone, guys. More than 6 million Muslim in Africa, more than 6 million Muslims in Africa are leaving the religion of Islam. What about the ones who left Islam but are too scared to tell it to their parents or families? You know how many ex-Muslims live in Saudi Arabia, guys? Do you have any idea? <clears throat> now my voice is gone guys but <clears throat> I'll try to answer a couple of questions in the chat are there any other questions before we wrap this up guys clearly Muslims today are too scared to call us or to debate us live on air where is Amin where is Mimi where is Fifi the Muslim heroes who can only make response videos about us. Right? Look, Rob Christian doesn't know how to read Arabic. Look, Rob Christian is a liar, brother. Let me make a response video. CP lied, brother. CP doesn't say that, CP. Christian Prince, it doesn't say that. Where are the Muslim heroes? Yeah, they are only selling supplements like uh, Ali Dawa and Mimi Hijab. Buy these black seeds. They are good for your health, brother. Buy this comb. Look at this shiny comb for your beard, brother. Let me give you the link and use the code uh, SAWS to get 20% off, brother. Yeah, Islam is a business, bro. Islam is nothing but a big business for these people, man. They don't care about the truth. Do we have any Muslims? Do we have any uh, Muslims? <clears throat> I think we are, we are out of Muslims. We are only having Munafiq hypocrites like this Islamist piece who is using Taqiyya in his nickname. Right? Uh, Islam is peace. Look, look at this hypocrisy of this Abdul. Let me ask you just one simple question. Guys, look what this guy wrote in the chat. Let me spank him. I've been spanking him all day long. But let me spank him once more. Islam is peace. Let me ask you a question. You said, and I quote, guys, pay attention. If Muslims leave Islam, that's their choice. We never attack apostate. Under Sharia law, if you are living under Sharia law in a country and you leave Islam and you don't repent in three days and go come back to Islam, what will happen to you under Sharia law? Guys, watch how he's going to do tap dancing. Watch how he's going to tap dance. Under Sharia law, if you leave Islam and don't repent in three days, what will happen to you as an apostate in it under Sharia law? Let, let us see, guys, if he's going to tap dance or answer the question. 
Nothing happened? You disgusting, filthy liar. Shame on you. You, you see, guys? This guy has no shame, he has no dignity, and he has no honor. He said, nothing happened. You liar. Are you even a real Muslim or are you simply using taqiyya? Uh, Muslims, I think you, you forgot that Christians, especially Christian apologists, when we wake up, we eat seven ajwa, all right? We become immune for poison and black magic. But because we are people of the book, we are Ahlul Kitab, we also get the extra, we become immune for taqiyya, brother. I am immune for taqiyya. All right? Brother. You see how easy it is to spank these people, guys? You see how easy it is to spank these people? You liar, you son of a liar. Let me show everybody. Ya Jaban ibn Jaban, ya Munafiq ibn Munafiq. Ya Munafiq, son of a Munafiq. Do, are you calling your prophet a liar? Are you calling your prophet a liar? <clears throat> this is the prophet of Islam, guys. He just called his prophet a liar. I, you, know, you saw him. You saw. He said nothing happens. Ibn Abbas said, the messenger of Allah, S-A-W, said, whoever changes his religion, kill him. What did this guy said? Brother, nothing happens. This is a Sahih Hadith. Do you see it? Nothing happens. Are you a liar? You filthy, disgusting liar? You see how easy it is to get spanked in Islam? You just called your prophet a liar. According to your prophet, you can take your seat in hellfire, brother. What did your prophet said in Sahih al-Bukhari? Whoever said Muhammad, whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Mr. Islam is peace. According to your prophet, you're going to go to hellfire. According to your own prophet, you're going to go to hellfire. Taqiyya boy. Your behind is going to get burned in hellfire. According to your own prophet. You just lied about your own prophet brother. Because your prophet said. Whoever changes his religion kill him. And you said nothing will happen. You disgusting. Mushrik. Wannabe Muslim. Your behind is going to burn in hellfire for eternity. You just lied about your own prophet. Are you a Muslim if you are lying about your prophet? Allahu Alam. Guys, thank you for watching. I think today was a good day. Thanks to the Lord. We spanked Muhammad. We showed how Muhammad is the one who was speaking in the Quran. We showed you how angels speak in the Quran. We showed you many contradictions in the Quran. We showed you how Muslims who come to our live show and are too scared to call us live on air. We showed you their hypocrisy. We show you that they are nothing but false Muslims, fake wannabe Muslims. And we showed you that they, when they lie about Muhammad, their behind is going to be burning in hellfire. Because Muhammad said, whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 108. And this guy just lied in the chat. Shame on you. Shame on you for calling yourself a Muslim. You're out of Islam, my friend. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Destroy that like button and click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live again. Today was a good day. We had many beautiful calls from our Christian brothers. Uh, like I said, don't forget to subscribe to our fellow warriors like Islam Critique who called me. That was a nice call and that other gentleman who 
discussed with me the many contradictions in the Quran. God bless you. God bless your families. Thank you for watching. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way and life. He is the truth. He is Al-Haq. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord, including your knees, Muslims. You still have time to leave your man-made call. Please leave Islam. Come back home to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. May Jesus, our Lord and Savior, bless you all. Bless your loved ones and families. Thank you for watching and God bless.